Okay, it's saying we're live, so hopefully, hopefully that is working. If it's not, I always say this, if it's not working, I'm sorry. <laughs> if it's not working, I'm sorry. Oh, it's working, yay. Okay, now I'm gonna minimize that. All Enjoy. right. Yes, hi, Francie, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good to see you here. Nice to be here. Awesome. All right. Well. Looking forward to having some fun. Oh, my goodness. We are ready. Right? Yes. I love these classes. They're great. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Does it make me feel um, like I'm able to just relax and go with the flow? Good. That's exactly. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Awesome. You just made my day. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so it's 6.01. We'll get started. Those of you on YouTube, hello. Sorry about the time change. We are, of course, I feel, I always feel bad because after we sign off, there's going to be people that are just logging on. And I'm always like so bummed because I know that, you know, they missed it and I feel bad. But at the same time, what can I do? We have told them, right? So hopefully that they um, can catch the recording. But welcome everyone. I am just um, looking through what everybody is doing here. It's 74 degrees in California, Loretta saying. Robin, yes, we were asking about what everybody's drinking. I'm having a glass of, no, a mug of tea because it's snowing here in New York. And Lisa's asking Legos. Yes, I always use Legos. So, but you don't have to use Legos. You could just use whatever um, straight edge you have. But we'll talk about it in a second. Before we get going, um, I just wanted to tell you last time, I think, was it last time? We shouted out my parents and they were so cute. They were just like, thank you for the shout out. <laughs> it was their anniversary and they were just like, saying thanks so anyway hi mom and dad all right they like to watch together in the philippines okay so i wanted to also have you write down what are you currently practicing what are you currently working on um last session i showed everybody my facebook which is just a book full of faces all right it's my facebook book and um the faces are going through i'm going through uh some kind of weirdness so see it's just a whole bunch of crazy faces um this was today's practice i don't know I, i'm trying so hard to learn um it's not the easiest but i am getting there i'm getting there i'm going to continue moving forward um so that working on a facebook and i'm working on an instrument all right so i'll show you the instrument i'm working on have you ever seen these? They're, they're called automatons. And um, it's just really, it's really cool. It, it makes the weirdest noise. So I'm just gonna turn it on real quick. Okay, so that's what, <laughs> I'm practicing that. Um, right before we got on, I was having a dance party by myself with the automaton, okay? So my kids walk by and they're just like, Troy or mom, what are you doing? But anyways, that's what I've been working on. What is everybody working on? Loretta said, finish grumpy chicken sketches. Ooh, I wanna see that. Um, Loretta, drawing nudes, three techniques, watching demos on pan pastels. Wow. Kay says, working on watercolor basics collage and collages with the 100 day project. Kay, I wanna see that. Fran Francie's making collages. Jane is doing abstract artist trading cards. Funky florals for Sarah. Cactus for candy. Cactus, if you have a lot, that means you're working on cacti. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm sorry. There's just so many. Can there be mom jokes? I feel like I'm always like on mom jokes. All right. Um, ink and watercolor for Barbara. Awesome, awesome. I'm just gonna put down the two links that we are working on today. One is the one is the reference photo if you didn't get it, and then one 
is a Pinterest board of what we'll be inspired in, with, all right? So let's see here. A special thanks to the recent coffee club donors. That's Carla, Asma, Miss Katz, Susan, Robin, Christine, Barbara, Laura, Georgina, and those that want to stay anonymous. Thank you so much. And thank you to those that also purchased the master mashup class with Van Gogh and Porter. And then for those of you in coffee club, one more announcement. Thursday, the 28th at 1, we are filming a class that I am so excited about. I cannot even, it is all about patterns and, oh my goodness, I cannot, anyway, mark on your calendar. If you are in the coffee club, I will send you the invite. People on YouTube, I won't be able to interact with you until after, so sorry, but um, I will come to and chat with you for a while later, all right? Okay, Fran photographing textures and patterns, and Marie says finish an A.Y. Jackson reproduction. Marie, I feel like you said that last time, and I forgot to look it up, so I'm going to have to do that for next time. All right, so those of you that are here with me on Zoom, we are going to be working on mark making, and the only reason why I have this Lego is... Um, I don't have a ruler, so I just use this Lego. I made myself a little Lego um, Lego bot or a Lego ruler-ish. And we're gonna make some boxes. We did this last time, but this time I'm gonna use three different tools. Those of you that were with me last time, pick three different tools. Please, um, on the chat, ask if you have any questions, you know, feel free. Lisa, still trying to find my style. Don't worry, Lisa, it comes when you are practicing, so you don't even have to worry about it. It'll just, it'll, it's just like your handwriting. It's going to come. You just have to keep practicing, and all of a sudden, boom, your handwriting's you. So, don't worry. All right. Um, let's see here. I am going to make little, even smaller boxes. You know how um, I used to be a teacher, right? And I taught, um, I'm gonna make these boxes a little bit bigger. I taught elementary school and um, I did a little bit of kindergarten and preschool and you just kind of teach them how to write and they, they end up coming up with their own handwriting. And then you grow up and your handwriting's totally different from when you started. So don't even worry about it if you're still trying to find your style. These are fun classes, Lisa, to take because you just play around and you find what you like, what you don't like, and then all of a sudden, boom! You have your own Lisa handwriting or Gail handwriting or Susan handwriting, um, Loretta. Christine, you know, I mean, everybody, you have your own. All right. Let's see here. Um, great, great, great. So now I made a whole bunch of boxes. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to be using today. I'm using a brush pen, a Pentel brush pen. And it, I love it because you can write really, really... Um, really really thin and then really really thick okay i also want to show you just want to make sure that i am oops youtube folks hang on one second there we go sorry about that did not see my page till just now there um i am also going to be looking at our i don't know why there's a, a glare it's very strange maybe it's just because i'm using two devices but do you see this? This is by Cy Twombly. Anybody familiar with Cy Twombly? All right, so he is an amazing artist and a lot of his work is mark making. So we're gonna be, oh, Francis said yes, we are going to be inspired by some of the works that he's done and how he makes mark making. Um, if you have the sheet or the, um, the PDF, there's a Pinterest board there. You just click on that if it'll work. Of course, it won't work. So, see if I can pull it up. 
One second, bear with me. Let's find the Let's Paint with Joy. My board. Okay. I don't know, for some reason, things work and then all of a sudden they don't. And then um, it's so funny because I'm trying to put LPWJ, which is the Let's Paint with Joy. Okay, there it is. Let's Paint with Joy mark making. It keeps auto-correcting. All right. So on this Pinterest page, oh, thank you, Loretta. I have put down, um, look at this. This is a Van Gogh. I mean, look at the mark making he does. It's just so much goodness. All right, so that's Van Gogh. Um, and this is Cy Twombly. Just a lot of giant mark making pieces. Last time, last painting with Joy, we, we studied a little bit about John Walker. And so now we're just gonna do some fun mark making because it's been a long day and we just wanna have fun, right? So I put a lot of Cy Twombly in there in the page and these are the different um, John Walker paintings. And the homework will have to do with some of that. But before we get going, I want us to go back to our page here, and I want you to just take a look at the Cy Twombly page and kind of see which ones do you like. What, what do you like? Do you like the way he makes these weird marks that are really, really fast? He has some cool little dot things happening here. I want you to take a tool, right, and I want you to to do like maybe do all four squares with some kind of side Twombly um, fun mark making. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I don't know why there's a glare. Sorry about that if it's glary to you. I'll try to go on this side. Weird. Okay, anyway, I'm going to start here. And I'm going to just mimic these lines that he's doing with my brush pen. Very, very loose. I love the scribbles, actually. So with the same tool, I'm just going to scribble. Do you like that? I don't know if you like that or not. I do. Um, I um, Somebody mentioned collage. And I love making collage pages. And so this to me is kind of like a collage inspiration. My, uh, my Pentel pen ran out of ink. So there we go. This one has ink. I usually carry it in my bag. All right, so that's another mark making that he does. He does, on this page, there's a lot of like, um, it looks like train tracks. So I'm gonna try that. And I'm going to just make these kind of marks, maybe varying the way, um, do I want it super close? Do I want it farther apart? Do I want them to kind of go back and forth? That kind of thing. What else do I like? I like how this is like, it looks like it's pencil. And um, I'm gonna try that one. Looks like it's in pencil and he's just having a good time smudging pages around. All right, so those are my mark making um, pieces and I'm going to write down, this is inspired 
by Cy Twombly. These, um, I went to a museum recently and these pieces are gigantic. I mean, they're like floor to ceiling, huge, amazing pieces. And then whenever you're like, I don't know what to do. I, I'm kind of like, I don't know what to paint. Do some of these. They're a lot of fun. All right, now take a different mark making tool. I'm gonna use a stick and some ink. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing that I did up here, All right? So this ink, somebody asked me from last time, these are the liquid watercolor from Blick and they come in this giant bottle. To me, it's giant. It takes me a while to finish one of these. And then I just pour it in one of these little cosmetic cups because it's easy to use. So I'm going to do the same thing using a stick. Maybe laying the stick down on its side. Okay. That just sounds good. Carla's asking, what museum did you go to? I went to the one in um, the National Gallery in Washington, D.C., and it was free, and they had, so, they had one or two of his works. I didn't really get to spend as much time there as I would have liked because on that wing. There's like a modern wing, and there's a... Um, a different wing which has like earlier artworks and I didn't get to spend as much time as I wanted to at the modern wing because I spent so much time with I got caught up in the Monet's and the Van Gogh's you know what I mean I I could not leave <laughs> I was there for a really long time and then I was overwhelmed by how amazing everything was. Oh, this is fun. The sticks are fun. So if you have something like this, what what kind of weird tool are you using that you normally don't use? Um, can you type it in the chat? I'd love to know what you're using. Because then later on, maybe I'll be like, oh, I should try that. So I'm just doing the same exact thing I did above. A bamboo skewer, Emily. Candy chopsticks from... Ooh, I like that. From the takeout. Fran, the other end of a paintbrush. Jane Lavender stem. And it smells good, too. That sounds great. Um, Q-tip for Lisa. I know Molly last time. She used um, nail polish. And then the nail polish... Um, a nail polish, and then some of her makeup, like contour brushes or something like that, which was really cool. Marie says, I have always have a twig with me in my bag. Fun. All right. So now I'm going to, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I'd love, but chopsticks. I didn't even think about it, but skewers. Okay. So the other end of the brush is a really good idea too. All right. Now take out a different tool and... This is a little different. We are going to look at our other page, okay? We're gonna look at this Van Gogh piece. Can you see it? All right. I'm going to try to get rid of that glare. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm just always, I'm overthinking. But um, you keep going, I'm going to clean my screen okay so here it goes here's the cleaning paper just gonna go black for just it's not paper it's a microfiber okay hopefully did that do it Ta -da! I don't know <laughs> we're just gonna let it be all right so I'm gonna look at his um, Van Gogh's piece here and I don't know if you noticed this but so many amazing mark making. 
Look at this. This is just the tree. These are the flowers. He did these flowers. Then he would do a big piece. Look at just the dots. I mean, right? Those are just dots that he did. Um, so I want you, with your other tool, I'm going to use an oil pastel. But first, I'm going to write down what this is. This was a stick. A stick with... Oh, I forgot to put down this is a Pentel brush pen. Stick plus liquid watercolor. Okay, so now I'm going to take a minute and just look at this. And I'm going to pick a oil pastel. I'm going to pick this green. Um, and I'm going to pick a few marks that I like that Van Gogh did. So I'm going to hold it up here and I'm going to work backwards so you can kind of, I'll hold it up as we're going along. Um, I like, I'm really drawn to this tree. So I'm going to try to do some of that kind of mark making. And then each tree has like these little lines after it or underneath it. Love that. And then maybe you could do like really light lines and then go deeper and like do harder lines, whatever you would like. Right? I love this kind of mark making. Okay, what else? I love the dots that he did up here. So I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of dots. You know the patience that it would have taken to do all of this right and they didn't have phones back then you would have had to do a lot of these things by memory so I think what he did was he would draw everything go home and then paint it from his drawing I don't know I'm just guessing that's what he did so I'm just going through I love the sound of that. Okay, what else do I like? I really like these sweeping lines that he has going on here. It's almost like, um, like the ocean or the water. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Some of them are broken lines. Some of them are very, very, um, some of them go on top of each other. Chicken nuggets. My pastel broke. <laughs> Can you tell I have children in the house? <laughs> Chicken nuggets. Um, they're not so small. I mean, I guess, you know, I guess I don't have to say chicken nuggets, but that just was what comes out sometimes. My expletive. All right. And then some of these lines that are going up. I just, sometimes when um, I'm kind of like, I don't know what to paint, I'm bummed, I'm really like, Meh. I just take a look at Van Gogh's artwork, and then I'm like, I can do some of those lines. Those are fun. So, that's what I'm trying to do. All right, here, this is kind of like a mishmash of all the different lines, so I'm going to do that very energetic. This is a good practice. When you are at home, turn up that music way up, all right? And then just do a bunch of these lines. Just go through and um, and paint. 
All right. Gail says, my mom used to say sugar, honey, iced tea. <laughs> I didn't realize what it meant until I was in my 20s. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, my, I have a coworker and she always says sugar. And then I always tell her, it's okay. You can say the actual word. It's just me and you in here. <laughs> There's no children. But, you know, she's very kind and she doesn't want to say those words in front of me. All right. There we go. I'm actually taking my um, baloney breath is what we use. What? We used to say, okay, so K says baloney breath. <laughs> That's funny. It's so funny how, you know, words evolve when there are children involved. All right, so I'm going to put Van Gogh. And this is oil pastel. Rachel says fudge. <laughs> oil pastel. Oh, Sarah says biscuit. Nice. See, we're learning. We're learning not only how to mark make, but other words we can use. Um, that's awesome. Okay, I am going to remove my pen, and I would love to see what everybody is doing. If you could hold yours up, this is the fun part. Those of you on YouTube, if you could like join us once in a while on Zoom, it is so fun to see what everybody does. Oh, Fran. Robin, you, ha Robin, you're the one with the wine, right, Robin? I can see that it's working on you. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Barbara, I'm black. I love it. Jeanette, oh, wow. With the green, Lisa, Christine. Oh, you did the flowers, Christine. I love that. Francie, Sylvia, good to see you. Kay. Jane, oh Jane, you filled the, it looks like you filled the page. Julie, Emily, all right, you got, it's looking awesome. Okay, so Robin says she used a cork on some of this. That's a great idea. Fran from Massachusetts, um, let's see here. Rachel, I saw yours for a second, Rachel. I saw the giant circular marks you were doing. That's great. Okay, Louisa, hi Louisa. Good to have you here again. All right, awesome. Great, great, great. Okay, so now what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to just take a second and um, take a look at what you did and then kind of with a pencil or something, just make a mark or a star or circle what you like. Like out of all of these, what is it that you really stood out to you and was just like... Um, Oh, Sylvia says hers is really... Oh, don't worry, Sylvia. That's okay. We can look at it. You could post it on the Facebook page. Heather says, son of a biscuit. Ooh, that's a good one. I might I'm gonna have to try that one. <laughs> son of a biscuit. I'm going to practice that one. Um, so I really like this one of mine. What else do I like? Um, this one I like too. I also like this one. And I like this one. Oh boy. We're going to be in trouble here. I'm kind of liking a lot of them. <laughs> Anybody else do that? Okay. So I made a few. We have a little map of what we um, liked and what we didn't like. Um, okay, Lisa is saying piffle toast new or use French, Dutch, or po Polish. Um, Emily says I also like a lot of them. <laughs> I know, it's hard to pick. So what I'm going to do, what I did last time was I put my, um, what we made and I put them on my wall. And so this is, I'll show you what I mean. So when I'm working, I forget what kind of marks I like, what kind of marks I don't like. So I like to put them on my wall. I pasted whatever we did last time on my wall. So when I'm working... I'll be like, oh yeah, I like that particular mark, and then I'll remember to do it, all right? So um, either open up your sketchbook page so you can see it easily, or use a page to um, tape it on your wall or, or something like that. All right, so now our next part. I'm excited about this part. I'm gonna take my piece out, and I'm just gonna kind of put it close so I can see it. Now, I'm gonna take my sketchbook out, 
So if you want to take a sketchbook or another piece of paper, let's see. We'll go this way. We are going to take the marks that we liked and we're going to draw these trees, all right? And every single, I'm gonna explain a little bit, every single bark or tree trunk that's on here, I want you to try to use a different mark making that we just learned or that you liked, okay? So I'm going to, with a pencil, um, yeah, I'll use a pencil so you can see what I'm doing. I just have the tree trunks right here. I'm just gonna draw. Turn, tree trunk, there we go. I'm gonna draw a bunch of them. So think of yourself like a little bug flying around, just drawing tree trunks, landing different places, moving, landing. Okay, here's a branch, but you don't have to put a branch if you don't want to. Just very loose, but enough room to where you can really make marks in between. Right? See how many you can fit in there. I have this thing about trees. I just, I love them so much. They are um, one of those things that when I'm driving somewhere and I see a beautiful tree, I almost want to just like park and take a picture. I don't do it because I don't want to be weird because some of them are in people's yards. But I try to take a mental note and be like, oh, that tree. I remember that tree. So these are my trees. Okay, some of them have shadow. We don't have to worry about that. But you can if you want to, because adding shadow, it makes it super powerful. Right, so just really fast, a whole bunch of trees. And that's it on this page. I'm gonna put this to the side. And now, um, I'm going to look at my page here and see what I like and that's what I'm going to use on the tree. So I'm going to take my Pentel brush pen and I'm going to try some of the ones that I did that was inspired by Cy Twombly. I think what it is, what was the glare was my iPad. So now it seems okay. Um, technology. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, so Francie says, I take tons of photos of trees. I know, it's it, they're just amazing. I always look at them and I'm like, I respect you because you have seen so much, you know, like have gone through so many iterations of time and, you know, been through a lot of things and they're still standing, which is just so cool. So I'm filling up one of my tree trunks with the mark that I really liked earlier from Cy Twombly. And even though Cy Twombly's was really like abstract, I'm kind of getting that feel too. Maybe if you're using a brush pen Press in, then come out, press in, just to give it a little bit of a difference. All right, so that's my first one. And maybe on some of them, I'll make them into a uh, solid, just to give it, I don't know, a different look. Right, and then I'll add the branch just because. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna look and see what is it that I like that we did um, and then do this trunk. I think I'm gonna do my oil pastel with um, these marks that Van Gogh did. So I'll keep that here so I can see it. And I think I am going to use, do I wanna use the green oil pastel? You don't have to use the same color. Um, let's see, but maybe I will. Uh, I won't use, I'll, I'll use a variety of greens. So on one side, I'll do these kind of marks that looks like this. It kind of looks like the Cy Twombly one. So I gotta vary it a little bit because we don't want it to look exactly the same because no trees are alike. It's the beauty of nature. I think that's why I tend to um, gravitate towards nature painting because none of them are alike. They're very different, have their own personality. Okay. Those of you using wet media, I can totally understand. You don't have to hold yours up, but I'd love to see it later. If you want to put it on our Facebook page, that would be great. Or just tag me. Oop. I was going to change the um, the mark making on this one, but I think I'm going to keep it going the same way. Just go through, making marks. If you have any questions, just type it in there. All right, now this one right here, I'm gonna do the dots because I really like the dots. I'm gonna take my oil pastel that I used before and I'm just gonna dot through there. Is anybody familiar with geocaching? My family and I love to do geocaching and what it is is like there's an app and people hide, um, things in different places and for example some parks have a geocache and then you go look for it. it's almost like a treasure hunt and then you'd find like this box and in the box people leave trinkets and then there's like a little log book and you sign your name on there that you found it um, but some of the geocaches are inside trees the trunk of a tree you know those hollow um Hello circles that are found in the tree. We've found some really fun ones in that. There's also, um, we went to one geocache that was in a graveyard. That was interesting. It was this really teeny tiny um, Hello Kitty box. Uh, Gail says we've done that up in the Adirondacks years ago. Yeah, we try to do it when we go to a different state and we're on a hike or something, we try to see if there's a geocache. It kind of makes all of those trips a little bit more fun. Right? Lisa says in the Rockies. Yeah, that would be great. Maybe they do have geocaches in the Rockies. I don't know why they wouldn't. Okay, what else do I like? These trees, uh, oh, okay, Lisa says they do. I love this like weird washi type line or mark making. So I'm gonna do that for this tree right here. It almost reminds me of a bark. Um, Susan says we even have it in Canada, a great international pastime. Ooh, that's a great idea. We might be going on a road trip to Canada, um, 
I'm going to have to remind my kids that to do geocaching there. Okay, so that's my, I'm, I might do the bark too, or the branch, just because it's weird. I don't know, I'm having a good time doing these like crazy trees. Um, they're really fun. I hope you like them too. Um, okay, so Lisa says done in Alberta, Newfoundland, and Montreal. Oh, great. I know my kids absolutely love it. Okay, now I'm going to use the stick and I'm going to use the same ink. And I'll probably do the same thing that I did right here, kind of like the ladder look. And then I'm going to go across like a ladder. Okay, now I'm going to take a look and be like, hmm, what do I like out of these? Or do I want to add more stuff to it? So I'll go back to my... Um, to my reference photo and maybe I'll add some, let's see. Maybe I'll add some branches, right? So, or if you want, you can make yourself another, another tree trunk creation, but maybe for this, I'm going to add some of the branches. And then even maybe put some of the leaves in. Why not? Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to put this on the side here so I can see it. Of course, it's turned a weird way. And I'm going to dab some brush. Let's see, what's a good brush? The ink is really messy, so if you ever use it, just be aware and have um, stuff that you can use to clean your hands like tissue. Okay, so I'm going to take, this is kind of fall look on the our pitcher. So I'm just gonna dab some leaves. If you're done early and you want to do that. It's also fun to try like I'm using a brush right now, but maybe don't use a brush. Maybe use, um, you know, something different or here's a brush that has a weird, um, a really pointy angle tip. So I'll use that. just to add some life and um, fun to this piece that we did. You can even change the colors. This is just watercolor. Oh, I love how watercolor just, when you dab it, it just dances. I'm just turning it to the side and just watching it dance with each other. Um, Susan says it's early spring season and winter. I like to take notice of trees, what I refer to as their bone structure or skeleton. I, I do like that too. Um, you get to see things that, uh, you normally wouldn't when the leaves are out. So yes, absolutely. Take notice, take a walk outside, check them out. I'm not really looking at my, uh, photo anymore. I'm just kind of adding my own twist to it. 
It's also good if you're already doing crazy colors or colors you wouldn't normally use. I guess I wouldn't call them crazy. Um, try different ones. So just fill a page with like a bunch of colors and then step back and then you'll be like, oh, these are the colors that I like. These colors I don't like. This is making me feel like it could be on a tote bag. <laughs> you know, like really big, these marks. I feel like um, the color scheme too. Have you ever been to Ikea? Sometimes they have some really cool designs on their pillows or different things like that. That's what this is kind of reminding me of, an Ikea pillow. All right, just going through, adding some more. And then there's shadow trees in the back. If you wanna add those too, just for fun, there they are. They're like in the shadow. So I'm going to add a few of those just because why not? But I'm gonna make them watery. Because these are, some of them are like really, really clear and some of them are just um, not so clear. And then if you like the here, I put too much pigment. So I just used a tissue, blotted it, and I really like how that looks. That just made me like happy. I'm going to try that again. So now I'm just playing. Okay, just keep adding to the trees. So the mark making practice, you can use actually, last time we did it with an aerial view of something. This time I just wanted to change it up. That's why I use this. So anything solid really, you can just use to add this type of mark making. And then if you don't wanna just put a sheet of paper up on your wall, you could just use this because this has all the different marks that maybe you liked. Okay. Just adding some more. Oh, that's too crazy, that blue. So I'm just gonna dab it a little bit. But maybe I like it because it's bleeding together. So, you know, just play around. Now I'm gonna take my pencil, a color pencil, and then maybe I'm gonna draw some actual leaves. just for fun. All right, everybody, I hope you're doing okay. Everybody's so quiet, working. I can't help myself, I always have to add like Little weird lines everywhere. So that's my first take on this particular piece. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of my page. So if you are done and you're like, I'm done a little early, take a look at what you did. And this time, just do that one specific design or one specific um, mark making. So for here, I'm really drawn to this particular one. So I'm gonna do a bunch of trees with this mark. But I also like this one. 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, it, it, it changes as we're going. So, okay. So I'm going to do my second page of trees. And I'm just going to do some lines using a blue marker here. And these are just tree trunks. So I'm not going to even worry too much about how they look. I'm getting a little bit of inspiration, but you know, making them my own. That's how you figure out your own handwriting. Our goal here is to not have them look exactly like the tree. It's just, you know, the energy of the tree or the feel of it. So yeah, sometimes I'm not sure what to do. I sit here, I have to paint every day because if I don't, I feel weird and um, just something doesn't feel like it's done. And so if I don't know what to paint, I just sometimes do these mark making exercises because it does not have to be serious every time. All right, so now I'm gonna use my Pentel brush pen. So really what we did was we went through, we did our whole bunch of mark making. Then we did some trees with a mix of all of the stuff we liked, right? And then now we're honing in on the one thing that we absolutely love out of all of these. And we're going to make a concentrated piece with just those mark making. So I'm going to start with mine. We are getting a lot done in this hour. I just like to overload you with a whole bunch of ideas. So by the time the week is done or the month is done, you still have a lot of stuff that you can do. Just going through. Adding these, They're, they look like little U's or like curly. They're really just scribbles, but I really enjoy, it feels good. It's like scratching an, an itch in my brain that feels good. Are you finding marks that you absolutely have fallen in love with and they're like, I cannot wait to add that with my artwork. So it's really good to, to study other artists and kind of see how they come up with their, you know, you, you do your take on what they're doing and then if you keep doing it over and over, it becomes part of your handwriting. When I was younger, we would do cursive in school and my cursive handwriting looked, I tried to make it look like my teacher's because my teacher was my example. But now that I'm older, I just kind of make up my own, you know, way of writing. Some of these um, little circular marks I'm making big some of them I'm making little so I'm just gonna go through and fill up some of these now you could do the same mark here's a challenge for you you could do the same mark but a different tool so I'm using a brush pen right here and even as I'm doing this my marks are changing which is really cool learning something about myself. So I'm doing that mark making technique. Maybe you have your stick next to you. You could use a stick. I will use my old pastel that I used earlier and make that kind of mark. 
Same kind of mark, but with a different tool. Because you might not like what tool you're using. Don't feel like you have to um, keep using it. It's just like, how many of you have ever read a book and you're reading it and you're halfway through and you're just like, this is not a good book. <laughs> like, but then deep inside you, you're like, I have to finish this book because I started it, right? Um, I don't think you necessarily, I know this is controversial, but I feel like you don't have to finish it if you don't want to. There's so many books out there. Find books that you like. But for a while there, it took me a really long time to be like, this is not a fun book. I'm not going to read any more of it. Because my parents drilled inside of me like, you have to finish what you started, you know? So, I'm learning. Learning to let go. Because life's too short to read a bad book. Um, Cynthia says, especially books on tape, if it's insipid or crappy voice narrator, it is easy to quit. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. If it's like a, um, a narrator that you're just not... Even if it's a good book, that's the bummer part sometimes. Sometimes it's a good book, but the narrator kind of is not my favorite, then I'm like, I got to go listen to something else. All right, so finish up your trees. While you're doing that, I'm going to talk about your homework. Let's see here. Yes, 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 there is homework. Um, I love homework. Uh, so for homework, try to, let me see if I can find what I said before. Because sometimes I say things and then I forget them. Let me just find it. You keep going. In our um, Facebook group, I put a whole bunch of ideas there for homework. Uh, let's see if I can find what I said. Sometimes I write things down and I'm like, oh, I have to remind everybody that. And then I forget what I said. All right. Where did it go? Homework. Okay. Create another page of mark making using a different inspiration. Um, we use trees here. Do something else. Maybe do leaves. Do an aerial view. Um, create a large mark making piece like Cy Twombly. Remember we saw some of his... Um, you're gonna need some big paper. I say, do you ever like at the, um, oh, Phoebe, great question. I'll, I'll link to it. Um, do you ever get those uh, paper bags from Trader Joe's or like the plastic bags? Just cut those open and then use that as your canvas, you know, to practice these things. So try it on there. Um, Heather says, listening to the Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, Heather, I listened to all of those. So good. And yes, there was a lot of hours to go, but I did finish it. It was really good. Um, let's see here. So create another page like this with different things. One option to create something large like John Walker or Cy Twombly like we just did. Let me see if I can find the page. Pattern play, was that the one? Nope. The mark making. I'm trying to find the, for some reason, um, it doesn't always open so quickly for me. Um, let's see. So one of these things, maybe just fill a page with these great marks, right? Um, or do a John Walker piece with a mixture of all of them together. Those of you that are, love collage, this is a great way of doing it. All right. And yeah, so we are not meeting next month, but those of you in coffee club, we are going to have a special coffee club hangout. Um, I'll let you know more about that. But then in May, we will meet together, Painting with Joy, 
and we are going to do flowers my favorite thing to do in May all right so before we go it's seven o'clock I can't believe it